You wouldn't think this could grow in the middle of the desert, but all this stuff is thriving and beautiful. Get out and explore, people. You never know what's in your backyard. Mangoes are delicious on their own, but in desserts, they're incredible. But these things can be hard to cut and peel. Here's how to slice and dice those mangoes. There's like hundreds of pounds of food in your front yard alone. Yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. We love to try to create a ornamental landscape that's edible, somewhere where you could get a lot of food and still make it look beautiful. That's what I love. It's, it's edible landscaping. So edible it's beautiful, landscaping. but it also, yeah. you can I mean, you eat can, it and survive off it. Up. Look at these butterflies. This is the secret garden back here. What is happening? Oh gosh, I love celery. Who doesn't? Get some wings, mm -hmm. celery. And this is much different than grocery store celery. Like it has a flavor to it versus yeah. just being like crunchy. Yeah, it's not just water waste. It's just not there's, watery. There's yeah. nutrition in this. This is Laurel Bay Leaf. Oh, bay leaf. Yeah, okay. we're three, four dollars for like two leaves. It's and pretty... you've got a whole tree of it. Don't let anybody know where yeah. this is so they don't come back here uh, trying to find your truffle leaves. Yeah, right. <laughs> this mango right here actually has some fruit on it this year. This is a manila mango and this loves growing out here. A mango is always easier to cut if it's nice and ripe. So a little soft to the touch and nice and fragrant. This might be my new favorite way to cut open a mango. Make a cut in the center all the way around that pit. If that mango is nice and ripe, this should be easy work. Just gently twist. This thing is sweet as can be. I'm gonna get a cavity from this thing. Careful, things may get a little messy, but this works pretty well. And then I like to use a spoon just to scoop everything out. Nice and soft, easy to scoop. Kind of like an avocado in a way. I'm just on a tropical vacation over here on my own in the kitchen cutting up some fruit. Here we go. Let's start picking some peaches, guys. They're ready? They're ready. Beautiful peaches. Oh, look at this. You guys got lucky today. Got? A guava. A peaches guava. and guavas and mangoes and lime and bay leaf, bananas. And this is just a normal residential backyard. Like this isn't any kind of special. No, yeah, exactly. So space or climate or anything. It's just a backyard. So what do you want to cut in first? Oh, let's get in those peaches. Oh my goodness. That was amazing. That was probably one of the best peaches I've had. Here's the more traditional method. If you're looking for chunks, I like to cut a little bit off the stem side. That'll give you a nice sturdy base and cut along the side of that pit. If you feel that pit, cut just on the side of it. For the sides, I just cut down from the top and run my knife along that pit. And do the same on the other side. The rest, I just call a snack. Just cut that away from the skin. Score the mango just down to the skin, not all the way through. Be extra careful here. This is where you can switch to a paring knife or a smaller knife if that works easier for you. Push it out and you'll see all those cubes. You can peel them by hand, that's easy. Eat it right out of the skin or use your knife. Another trick you can try is once you have the half of the mango, use a cup to peel it. The cup's gonna act like a big spoon. Scoop it right out. Ta-da! No matter how you cut it, mango is delicious. So permaculture is working with nature versus trying to work against nature. We're really giving back to the earth. We're adding mulch, we're adding compost, we minimal disruption to our soil, mm -hmm. and we allow the microbes to take action. So yeah, in your first year of doing this, you may not have the largest yields. You may not have the be best looking plants. Second year, you're gonna notice it'll get a little better. Your yields will increase, okay, so on and so forth to the point where you have something like this going on where I could tell you about 60% of what's in here popped up either from its seed from last year mm -hmm. or it's perennial, like these echinacea and the strawberries. It's just regenerative. This is like the true definition of organic gardening because you just yes. let the garden grow itself, yes. you know? There's an entire world beneath, beneath us. Beneath us. And if you take care of that world, that world would take care of you. Even like these sweet potatoes. This, I don't plant at all. I mean, I planted it one time a few years ago and it comes back every year. So, so a lot of this stuff, you know, and just patience you and you'll get good stuff in a few years. Absolutely. We compost everything. So even when I cut down that banana later, I'm gonna chop it up into pieces and I'm gonna do something like what I did right here. So you end up cutting them in half and then you lay them flat on their wet side. And if you flip this over, you got all your roly polies, your worms. All your decomposers, all your... Everything. All your microbiology. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me to your backyard. This was Absolutely. incredible to see, just the variety of fruit you have back here and 
just the vegetation is just gorgeous. I agree. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank thanks. You're coming out here. Some people go to the farmer's market. Other people just, just you know. Go in their backyard. Go in their backyard. Justin did load me up with a ton of fruit, but I still need to pick some stuff up from the store. I already have a bunch of peaches, but these are beautiful yellow peaches. Oh gosh, they got so much produce today. Berries galore, fruit galore. Here's a good bunch right here. These are some long bananas. Look at these bananas. Big old bananas. Bananas are a staple on those kitchen countertops, but it can be a bit of a countdown where the first one might be underripe and the last one overripe. How many of these banana tricks do you know? To keep those bananas fresher longer, wrap the stem. You can use regular plastic wrap, but I like the sticky stuff. Now you just need a small piece and wrap the end. This will prevent it from getting too ripe too quick and last longer. I've ran across bananas at grocery stores that are already wrapped, but if not, you can do it yourself. Well, I'm out of eggs, but I do have bananas. If you're baking and you find yourself running short on eggs, a banana could be a good substitute in some recipes. Brownies, some cookies, muffins, and cupcakes. Mash up the banana. This comes from vegan recipes where many of the baked goods use a banana instead of eggs. And you can substitute one banana per one egg. Well, I said I didn't have eggs. This is a golf ball. Don't let anybody tell you there's a wrong or right way to peel a banana. Started from the bottom, now we're here. If you only want half a banana, no need to dirty a knife. Don't squeeze, just a quick tug. Two clean halves. Dragon fruit, what? These are crazy. These are Keanu melons. Whoa, this is the fattest pineapple I've ever seen. That is a monster. The cashier is gonna be like, why do you have one of every fruit here? Is this not how everybody grocery shops? You just gotta squeeze a ton of fruit until you know which ones to get. But this is why you have to wash fruit. It's because everybody's put their grimy little paws all over everything to find the good stuff. It can be tough to find ripe bananas at the grocery store, so if you're in need of a quick ripe banana, turn to your oven. Preheat that oven to 300 degrees. When things are toasty, toss it right in onto the rack. Check on it after five to 10 minutes. What you want is for that peel to be dark brown. Careful, it may be a little warm. Turn off that oven. Ooh, I can smell banana. Looks gross, but tastes delicious. Especially in recipes where you want a rich banana flavor. You'll want to let this cool for a few minutes before you use it. Yeah, this tip is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Yeah, Gwen, I, I know. The oven's gonna start caramelizing those sugars, making your banana even sweeter. Better than sitting on the counter for a few days. Skip the landfill and compost those peels. Or save these for your next cart race. And that's how I like to eat my apples and bananas. I've been around my nieces a lot lately. I haven't been here in a long time. It's kind of a unique facility. It's a worm composting facility. So basically they take organic scraps and turn it into worm casting, which is essentially worm poop. <laughs> so I really want to see how it's changed and grown and thrived. So this area is what they're known for, the worm castings. So it's basically just a mound, a bunch of worms and scraps, like food scraps. And they turn it into castings, which is really, really nutrient and vibrant material that you can add to your garden, men's soils, it's, it's really good for planting and gardening. Vermicompost is the name of the process. Doesn't smell, no aroma. I mean, it's just so fascinating. Just very little technology, just water, dirt, and living organisms. Just a mound of gardening gold. So last time I was here, I think it was just this gardening bed, but they've expanded so much and we're making our way to the uh, for, uh, what's it called? <laughs> food forest? We're making our way to the food forest. Are these artichokes? Do I have that right? Crazy looking, gorgeous though. So this is really cool to explore. This is the fruit forest here at the Arizona Worm Farm. It's a lot different than Justin's backyard. You know, he's dealing with limited space. Here we have a huge area of fruiting trees, a lot of edible vegetation back here. So I just wanna walk around and explore. You wouldn't think this could grow in the middle of the desert, but all this stuff is thriving and beautiful. This is an ever-bearing mulberry tree planted in the fall of 2019. And now look how huge it is. Just giant rows of composting, nothing but leftover produce <laughs> sitting in the sun. Well, I'd say you're about ready for a harvest here. These are a bunch of apricots. So many of them on this tree. I mean, apricots for days. There's still, oh, there's so much in here. It's incredible. I mean, 
get out and explore, people. You never know what's in your backyard. Well, Justin has a lot of stuff in his backyard, but here, it's in everybody's backyard. They can come and visit cool places like this. Yeah, my Vogue cover. Maybe complex. Maybe I can get in the complex one day. <laughs> this kind of looks like an olive tree. Not sure though. Here's the sign. Olives. I was right! I was told there were some girls I need to find here, so I'm on my on a mission to find the girls. I'm hunting for chickens, but I don't see them searching for, not hunting. The chickens are for egg laying only. So we're searching out the chickens. Poor choice of words. I found the girls. The chicken coop is right here. Look at all these gorgeous chickens. Just relaxing in the afternoon uh, shade here. What an amazing chicken coop. I would love to have chickens one day. Maybe like four, not 40. <laughs> Sweltering outside, if I use that word correctly, right? Sweltering. <laughs> so I need a cool, refreshing treat. I can get a fruit cup or I can go big and get the pina loca. I feel like that's the move right there. All right, I'm gonna do it. Can I get a pina loca? This is gonna be insane. I've done this before where you take the pineapple and you turn it into a boat. I did Hawaiian night with my family and I made pineapple fried rice and then I served it in a pineapple boat. It's got some knife skills right here. Look at this guy. Going to town. Some people see a pineapple, some people see a bowl. The pineapple, a tropical staple, but are you picking the right one? Here's how to pick and cut the perfect pineapple. These are called the eyes of the pineapple. Pick one that has evenly sized eyes from top to bottom. A telltale sign for a ripe pineapple is tugging that leaf. If it easily comes out, you're good to go. This is important because pineapples won't ripen more once they've been harvested. The natural juices tend to settle in the bottom, so 30 minutes before you're gonna cut into this thing, turn it upside down. And for the assist, I'm gonna use a pitcher. Finally, it's your time to shine. Cut the bottom off, say aloha to the top. This may seem a bit unconventional, but now we're gonna slice up the whole thing. Last slice, be extra careful. My secret tool, a donut cutter. Just one press will make quick work of making pineapple rings. That's amazing! I'm Pineapple Man. <laughs> All that's left is slice and enjoy. Pineapple's great on its own, but I like enhancers like chamoy and tahini. Shake it good. Sorry, SpongeBob, but your house is delicious. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. This is epic. Look at this thing. Oh. Now begins my fruit journey. He put the hot sauce on the side just in case I wanted to customize my ratio. But there's chamoy on here, tahini. There's jicama. I love jicama. It's like a crunchy apple. Ooh. That chamoy and tahini will get ya. This is probably the sweetest mango I've had in a long, long time. As if we didn't have enough, a whole mango nada. It's really fun. It's like sweet, savory, spicy, sour. Brain freeze. My haul, my fruit haul, cleaned them out. <laughs> yeah, so this is the Cave Creek Food Forest. As we're entering in, you can see a lot of green foliage. Oh, these vines right here are all, all these, passion fruit. Yes, all these vines are passion fruit. Passion fruit's beautiful just like ornamentally. Yeah, this is just the outside. We're just checking the perimeter. <laughs> yeah, so this is just the very base of the, of the garden. Oh, I like this gate. It's like the secret garden gate. Absolutely. And the craziest thing about this whole food forest is it's only been in development for one year. So, so even, yours, you've built up over time. This seven food years. forest, seven yes. years. This one is one year old. So right here we have artichoke. Oh, those are gorgeous. We saw some flowered artichokes the other day. Yes, and they um, get the beautiful purple. Yeah, I didn't know that that's what they look like. They eventually, the artichoke, the, this part that you eat, like yeah. when it blooms, it's just like- It's a flower. Mulch is one of the three keys to a successful garden. Mulching, it's going to create insulation for your soil. Helps so keep gonna, things nice and cool nice or and warm cool in the, the winter, yeah. cool during the summer. Uh, allows the microbes to become more active because it gives them food to eat. And if the microbes are eating, that means your trees are eating. And then the other reason is it's going to produce mycelium. And mycelium 
is probably one of the biggest keys and factors to having a successful garden. Mycelium is like fungus, like yes. kind of like a mushrooms. Exactly. It helps break down everything. Typically with trees, we like to, the first year we focus on roots, and then the second year we focus on shoots, and then the third year, you're more than welcome to eat all the fruits. <laughs> roots, sh shoots, and fruits. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, there's a good size beauty. peaches right here. Oh, this one is ready, for sure ready. So why don't you take a bite of that? <laughs> mm. <laughs> that explosion, man. Mm, okay. A little messy, but it's so good. Peaches are one of my favorite fruits, and when they're in season, they are so good. But when it comes to stone fruit, those pits can hide a little secret. Here's everything you need to know for peach season. You ever notice some peaches twist right open, while others hold tight to that pit? What we have here is freestone versus clingstone, and it doesn't matter how ripe it is. Unfortunately, you can't just tell from the outside. And most grocery stores don't say it on the label, but it doesn't hurt to ask. However, early in the season, you're more likely to find those clingstone varieties, while later in the season, you'll generally find more freestone. No matter what you do, you can't change a clingstone into a freestone. Most people tend to cut along that seam, but you don't want to do that. Instead, make a lateral cut along the center. With a little twist, that pit should release. With that pitted side, make another cut perpendicular to the seam. Another twist. Now you should be able to easily pop that pit right out. Since peaches have a short season, an easy way to preserve them, slice and freeze. I get my light from the sauce, yeah. I got my peaches out in Georgia. Now that's the 411 on peach pits, no matter where you live, even 90210. Again, this is just one year of growth. I mean, can you imagine this place in seven years? Oh, everything's gonna be so tall, so lush, so dense. It's yes. gonna be great. So again, it took my food forest seven years to get where it's at because I had to do minor plantings and do things within my budget that I was given. Over time, yeah. Over time. If you have the resource, you have the land, I highly recommend converting it and doing it as fast as you can because the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the next <laughs> best time is now. <laughs>